One of the things in that plan was when the pension fund hit 82 percent, the city was required to fund it. What happened after I left was they didn't do it. And within five years after she left, courtrooms were filled with former city and retirement officials and their defense attorneys. Answering to a pension deficit fueled by more unfunded benefits, while money chased other priorities in an economy going south. We're a low-tax city. It's mm -hmm. going to find problems. To let the problem sit for five years without any action is where, why we're where we are today. This from a former Golding chief of staff when Golding was a county supervisor. The one part that I think that she's still in denial is that the underfunding did start under her administration. She can, and again, she's trying to say that the experts told me so. Well, leadership starts at the t top, and the people voted for the mayor and the council, and it's, it was their final vote. It didn't help that an expanded Qualcomm Stadium missed out on $36 million worth of rent over seven mostly bleak charger seasons. The team's ticket guarantee also guaranteed growing public outrage. The fact is, if they hadn't let that deal go, we would be getting... Um, I think it was Dick Murphy who let the deal go. We would be getting an amazing amount of rent from the charges right now. So much so that the city's bond debt on the stadium expansion project would have been fully paid off. But as it is now, several million dollars a year is coming out of the general fund. You don't have to take my word for it. A shining moment hosting the 1996 GOP National Convention on the cusp of a U.S. senatorial bid that eventually fizzled, as did, critics say, her second term as mayor. Whether it's um, she is more to blame, Dick Murphy's more to blame, the endemic problems in the history of San Diego are more to blame, someone is and someone should take some responsibility for what's happened in the city since, since she was around.